attention is that we get very concerned that we need to always have uh, fresh fruit or it's or fresh vegetables or it's not as good. Frozen is just fine, just fine. All those same nutritional values are in the frozen fruits and vegetables. Those are perfectly good things to have and they tend to be a little less expensive. Um, when we're looking for things that are in season, that tends to be a little less expensive. You know, I go through and I find out what's on sale and that's kind of where I tend to go. Um, so really important to know that. And um, canned is okay, but with the canned fruits, you want to make sure that they are within, with, um, they are put in 100% juice and not the high fructose syrups. And with the vegetables, you want to really check because a lot of times they're preserved with a lot of salts. Sometimes even if you have like a, a can of beans or something like that, you can rinse them and that helps get out some of the salt. It doesn't perhaps take care of all of it, but it helps. So again, just to be aware and looking at the ingredients in anything that you choose. Um, one caveat with the uh, frozen vegetables, the frozen vegetables with those little packets of sauce, that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just the vegetables, right? Um, so again, just really important to look at what you're putting in your body. Questions about any of that? So sometimes folks have questions about organic fruits and vegetables, and um, those tend to be more expensive. So there's an organization called um, EWG, it's Environmental Working Group, and every year they come out with the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. And what from their way of looking at things, the clean 15 are fruits and vegetables that tend to have either less of a chemical load because they don't use many of the um, pesticides with them, they grow without them, or their skins don't allow that to penetrate. And the dirty dozen are the ones that, if you have the um, inclination to buy things organically and certainly the funds to be able to do so, the dirty dozen, those are the ones that you might want to consider buying organically. Now again, we have the great um, opportunity here in the state of Maine that we have access to a lot of our farmers markets. So we can ask, we can ask the people to grow it. Hey, what do you use? Can you tell me why? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, you don't use anything, awesome. Um, so we have that ability to have those conversations. And I encourage you to have them. Just kind of find out, again, it's all about what it is that we're putting in our body. Okay. Questions about this? I think they actually have an app too that you can download. I think they do, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. So that it's just right there on your phone. Anytime you're like shopping, you can just pull up the Queen 15. And, uh, Which is really nice to have, you know, just to know. And again, I, I certainly need to be thoughtful about how I spend my money. And so I want to make sure that if I'm choosing to buy something, that it's something that makes sense. Something that makes sense. In terms of uh, insecticides, is, is the best way to clean it just the, the water? or? or more complicated than that. It's, I mean, that is, that's the, the best way. That said, water doesn't always wash it off. Yeah, I was So if you have something like strawberries, for example, and usually it's the things that are softer and whatnot, you know, you can't, you can't scrub a strawberry, right? right. Um, and so a lot of times that abuses it, so that's one of the things that tend to be on the list of the dirty dozen. Oh, I see. That's on the list of of the dirty dozen, of the ones that have more of a chemical load. And you can take one of these things up here just to have a look at it. Like I say, they update it every year. And it's not an exact guide, but it does give us at least a pathway, you know, something to consider, something to think about. Um, the unfortunate thing for me is that grapes are on the dirty dozen, and that's what my kids love. So, you know, it's, it's again, being thoughtful. Um, all the stuff that I'm talking about here, again, what I encourage folks is to kind of listen and incorporate what makes sense to you. We're all going to make different choices, that's okay, but if we're at least educated about what those choices are and are being thoughtful about it, we're much more likely to choose some healthier ones. Okay. So how much exercise do they recommend that we get each week? About a half an hour a day. About a half an hour a day, yep. About 150 minutes or so of exercise. And what do folks do for exercise here? Walk, yes. 
Um, Jog. Swim. What was that? Lifting weights. Lifting weights, perfect. Bike. Bike, yeah. So all of those kinds of things. So again, it doesn't have to be a Kenzie, but it doesn't have to be joining a gym. Getting out and walking, taking the dog for a walk, chasing after your kids or grandkids, any of those kinds of things, right? Get us out and active. Um, they've done some studies fairly recently about being sedentary, sitting a lot, and they're talking about that now as being the new smoking, okay? So if we are sitting at our desk or at our work site for extended periods of time, they're looking at that as being something as being a health hazard. So now a lot of companies are starting to really institute stretch breaks. You know, get up and every so often they institute a stretch break so that people are up and moving a little bit. Those kinds of things. So again, I don't know what the capacity is to do something like that, but something just to be aware of. Something just to be aware of. So if you have the opportunity to get up and just sort of stretch, move around a little bit, just adjust, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Okay. And again, it does not have to be joining a gym. It does not have to be running a marathon. But getting out and moving, walking as you talked about, looking at the leaves out there, anything like that, keeps us moving, even in the wintertime. You know, whatever that might be. It's much more challenging for me because I don't like skiing or anything like that. I don't like being cold. Um, but it's getting out and being as active as we can, okay, to the best of our ability, whatever that is. Three things. If we maintain a healthy weight, <clears throat> we eat a little more nutritiously, and we get the amount of exercise that is recommended, those three things can reduce the amount of cancer out there in the world by 30%. That's a lot. And that's stuff we have control over. Stuff we have control over. They've looked at some of the cancers, um, you know, breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer even, has some sort of degree having to do with our, our weight and our um, exercise and what we eat. Now, are all of those things totally preventable? No, they're not. But can we reduce our risk? Yeah, we can. We can. So it's taking charge of the stuff that we have control over. Okay. So I've got a short little video I'd like to show you. And uh, then we'll come back.
So the question is, what's the what's the medicine, and, and what is 23 and a half hours? So the medicine is exercise, mostly walking, so not triathlon. And, and let me just put it a different way. I, I think what I'm um, asking you to do is, if you think about your typical day, so there's 24 hours, and so you might spend most of your day, you know, this varies obviously, but uh, you know, couch surfing, sitting at work, obviously sleeping. And what um, the evidence that I'm going to show you tells me is the best thing you can do for your health is to spend half an hour being active, maybe an hour, and that uh, if you can do that, you can realize all the benefits I described in the previous slide. So if exercise is the medicine, what's the dose? So when I think of, of, of dose, I think of how long, how often, and how intense. I'm going to give you a slightly mixed message, but essentially uh, more activity is better. But I must say the rate of return seems to decline after 20 or 30 minutes a day. So if you're being active less than 150 minutes a week or, or more, if you're a kid, an hour a day, if you're a kid, my flag goes up in the clinic. So my personal take on this is that um, you know, literature draws a very broad brush. Uh, and so we see big differences when somebody goes from not doing anything to doing something. And after that, the return is more granular. So if we took the nurses' health study, when they went from zero activity to just one hour a week, that reduced their heart disease rates by uh, almost half. So you can break it down, so it can be 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, if you want to do uh, 30 minutes of exercise, so it can be broken into three. If you're only gonna do it if it's pre-booked with friends, you know, I have couples that take a half hour walk every morning or evening to organize their life. A dog is a great uh, walking coach. Uh, the data showing 67% of dog walkers achieve 115 minutes a week just with the dog walking. And finally, of course, your commute, you know, getting off stop early, taking the stairs, and so on and so forth. The next way to think about it is the reverse. So what I call sitting disease, we know that being sedentary is bad for your health, but uh, a researcher named Leonard Bierman uh, wanted to quantify this, and he did so down in Australia in a big study they did there. They found compared with persons who watch no TV, those who spend a lifetime average of six hours a day watching TV can expect to live about five years less. I mean, that's incredible. So then I think, oh, who watches six hours a day of TV? Uh, it turns out the average adult in the USA spends about five hours a day uh, watching TV or screens. So I, I, I find this fascinating that um, we never think of the TV as uh, something that's bad for our health, but clearly it's as powerful as many other risk factors for chronic disease. So I'm gonna finish by asking you a question, and this may have some personal challenges for you. So you, you know, you might be very busy with work or kids or both, and you, you're maybe uh, in pain or have other priorities, but um, um, my question to you is can you limit your sitting and sleeping to just 23 and a half hours a day? So whether it's hitting the gym and attaining fitness goals or walking the dog or taking the stairs, get out there and be active. Thanks again to 24 Hour Fitness for bringing you this message. Well, I just like to see a film here and to me I can never decide if that makes me a little nauseous when he's drawing that fast or if I kind of like it. But um, but again, the I message... I to walk <laughs> into this visual lecture. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Okay. And um, so I, what I like about it, though, is really just encouraging us to be active. And the one thing I wanted to mention from this little clip here is remember when you said, you know, it can be 30 minutes a day, but it can be 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. So again, sometimes we get a little wound up in, oh my gosh, where am I gonna find that amount of time to go do this? You can do it 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon, 10 minutes in the evening. So it's just a matter of really putting that amount of time into it. Again, does not have to be like sweating all over the place, but moving and being active, that makes a difference. It really makes a difference. So anything that we can do, help keep ourselves active, eating a little more healthily, um, it's important. And it's something, again, my world's about cancer, that's what I'm talking about, but as you heard here, this impacts a whole lot of other things as well. Same thing with the, with the amount of uh, nutrition that we get. Questions, anybody? So that's pretty much what I have here. Um, I do have, you're welcome to come up and look at any of this. I have a couple of recipes up here if anybody wants to try stuff. A um, couple things that I've, I've tried so I can vouch for. Um, if anybody's interested in that, there are also some booklets up here about kind of taking charge and taking control. And the recipes, by the way, are really easy. Um, 
and information about the Dempsey Center and certainly the challenge in 2018. If anybody's interested, because you could join as a team, that would be a fitness school, it would be awesome, um, anything like that. So, or if you have any questions about uh, anybody impacted by cancer. I can't remember if I mentioned this or not, um, but we are, as the Dempsey Center, looking to merge, um, hopefully, with the, the beginning of next year with the Cancer Community Center, which is located in South Portland. So it'll be Dempsey Center Portland and Dempsey Center South um, Lewiston and South Portland. So that would be certainly easier access for folks that live in the more southern areas. So I just wanted to mention that. We're looking to kind of incorporate the, the good from both organizations and uh, bring that together. Thank you. Thank you.